As promised, I have a fantastic guest with us today. So honored. We've been waiting a few months to get this set. Uh, this next veteran, this gentleman, has been in the Navy, played football. Then he went Navy Reserve, and now he is going so fast it's hard to keep up with him <laughs> on the racetrack. I have with us today the one, the only, Lieutenant Commander Jesse Awuji, and I want to thank you, sir, for finally connecting with us. How are you? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no, I'm doing good, doing good. Thanks for having me on the show today. Of course. I know you're super busy, and uh, it's just uh, kind of, I'm kind of starstruck here. I mean, <laughs> other than a few hours in December for a few years in a row there where you broke my heart beating my beloved army <laughs> folks. I, Four, times than, Four times while I was at that Hey, 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 don't rub it in. <laughs> Oh, oh, actually, actually, you know what? Actually, I am actually six and zero oh in football against uh, uh, Army. Um, so when I went to the prep school at Naps, we beat Little Army. Then I went to the academy four years in a row, beat Big Army. Then I went back and coached at Naps again at the prep school, and then we beat Little Army again. So even as a coach, I'm one and zero. As a player, oh, I'm five and zero. Yeah, I missed that you were a coach, but I saw how many years you broke my heart there. I was I was fresh out of the army. I was hosting some parties at the VFW. We had the big screen, and year for year, you and your you and your uh, fellow uh, teammates just crushed us. <laughs> So, well, let's let's get started. Um, for for folks that don't know your your background story, a lot of a lot of folks are following you today. But would you mind sharing with our listeners what were the decisions and and the circumstances that led to actually joining and choosing specifically the Navy? How did that come about? Yeah, so um, you know, originally I'm from Dallas, Texas, and that's where I grew up. Uh, both of my parents are immigrants from Nigeria, so they immigrated to the U.S. back in the '80s. <laughs> And when they came out here to the U.S., you know, their big goal and dream was to, you know, have that American dream, be able to build a life from pretty much nothing. Because coming from Nigeria to here, they didn't have much, uh, but to build a life, build their family, be able to give uh, more opportunity to their kids so that they could, you know, be able to, you know, grow up here and and, and do some great things. So um, they settled in Dallas, Texas, and naturally for me and my brothers and even my sister, we gravitated towards sports. And uh, me and my brothers, uh, football was a thing because football is the biggest thing in Texas. So uh, as we as we started playing, you know, middle school and high school, all of us, you know, we learned and learned. We got better and better and better. Um, we eventually started uh, getting some attention from different schools. And uh, for me personally, the Naval Academy was the best of the options that were recruiting me. I mean, I had some other D- D1 offers, but um, Naval Academy to me was just the best opportunity. So, you know, when they were looking at me, for me, I just looked at them as a great opportunity go to a great school, get a great education, be able to play football for a great team. And then when I graduate, have a career started for me as an officer in the United States Navy. So for me, that was a win because I looked at it as like, you know, football is fun. It's great, but it doesn't last forever. Right. You know, you you go play college football. Who knows what happens after that? You know, maybe, maybe, maybe if you're fortunate, um, you know, you can make it on to the next level. But I mean, such a small percentage, such a small chance. I'd rather have something a little bit more secure set up, you know, where I can go have this career and and being an officer in the Navy, I mean, it's a wonderful career to have. And, you know, if you don't want to do it forever, you can get out after five years, but if you want to do it for 20, 30, whatever years you can. So for me, I was like, man, this is, this is perfect. Like who wouldn't want to go do this? So um, I decided when I was graduating high school, that Naval Academy was where I was going to go um, played football there all four years at the Academy, uh, 2006 to 2010. And um, had a really good time doing that. And uh, when it was time for graduating, um, I had to pick, okay, what community uh, in the Navy was I going to join, right? You know, you can go Navy SEAL, you can go uh, 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 EOD, uh, you know, the explosive ordnance disposal people. You can go, you can go to Marine Corps if you wanted to, you can go aviation, submarines, you name it, surface warfare. For me, I I, I selected surface warfare because I wanted to be on the ships. Um, I felt like I fit, I fit my personality and what I wanted to do best out of all the other fields. I did like the aviation field, but um, their, their swimming requirements, I, I could not keep up with it. Like I, I, I could swim, I can do your basic swim stuff, whatever, you know, swim 50 meters, do the underwater, uh, do all that other stuff, jump off the 10 meter, I can do all that stuff. But to throw a flight suit on and swim for a mile, like I just, uh, yeah. Might as well have <laughs> a tank in your back at that point. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, that's just not for me. So um, I went the surface warfare route. I did that and um, uh, enjoyed every bit of it, you know, especially on the ships. I went on a couple different deployments. Um, but uh, it's crazy because as I was deploying and doing all these things, I started to also in my personal life, when I would come back to San Diego, which is where I was stationed, I was starting to grow this passion for cars and racing. 
And that's what eventually started leading me towards this crazy, you know, new path that I'm on to as well, while it's still simultaneously doing this while I'm in the reserves now and I'm not active duty anymore. Yeah. It's just, just incredible. Quite, quite, quite the flip there, but not really in the sense of things that you already owned, right? You had uh, motivation, discipline, hard work ethic. So it's, even though it seems like it's two different worlds, coming from football, being in the military and going into a very competitive, difficult sport, I would think that you kind of had the proper DNA sitting there for you <laughs> to capitalize on. So walk us walk us through that exact uh, phase. I mean, from, from going from the thought of it mm-hmm. to the first time behind the wheel, how did that come about? Well, it, it's, it's so funny. If you, if you look at the thought to the first time behind the wheel, it literally was it. It was a sitting in my room and made the decision one night that I wanted to become a professional race car driver in January of 2014. That's when that happened. And then fast forward about a year and a couple months later, I did my first real wheel to wheel race. A few months later, I actually did my first wheel to wheel race on TV. Wow. So within a year and a half, I was actually on TV racing. I remember doing an interview too. And it's crazy. I'm like, what the heck? Like in a year and a half, I finally, I, I got now, I wasn't at the top level of NASCAR. That was still NASCAR K&N series, which is kind of, it's a regional level series, but still nationally broadcasted on TV. But still for me, it was cool. Like I'm racing on TV, you know? So anyways, how that whole thing transitioned, because it didn't just go from, oh, I had a thought and then it just happened, right? There was a lot of crap I had to go through to get to, get to that point. So basically how it kind of all kind of happened was, you know, back in 2011 12, and, and 13, because 2012, I spent that whole year in Bahrain. I was gone <laughs> on deployment. Sure, but sure. 2011 and 2013, I was I was I was here in the States and half of 2014. So while I was here in the States um, on my free weekends that I would have, you know, when I wasn't on duty or we weren't underway with our ship, um, I was taking my personal cars to local tracks in Southern California. So you can uh, each track has these things called open track days where um, groups will put on events and you can bring your cars there and you can run your cars on the track, you know, do, you know, four or five sessions, 20 minute sessions on the track. You know, you can, you know, be in a beginner group, you can be in an intermediate or an advanced, you can learn how to drive better and better and better, faster and faster. So I was doing that and I, I was getting pretty decent at it. You know, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't the best, but I was getting, you know, getting, getting good pretty quick. And um, from there, I was like, man, like eventually I'm gonna get a lot better but I want to take this to the highest level I can. I don't want to just be a track day guy for the next, you know, for the rest of my life. I'd, why not try to go after it all? Go risk it for the biscuit, right? Go, just go. So uh, I decided, you know what? Like that's when it was in January, 2014, when I just decided when I was sitting in my room, I wanted to become a pro driver. So I uh, made that decision and started doing some research on what it took to get there. Obviously there's a lot of different racing series out there. You know, it's not like there's just one series, right? You got NASCAR, IndyCar, Formula One, sports car, a lot of different sports car series, um, dirt racing. Uh, I mean, it, it's all over, right? So I had to figure out, okay, what route did I want to go? So I didn't really necessarily pick one to begin with. I just started shotgunning it. So I started reaching out to people who were in those different series to learn a little bit more about what it took for them to get there. I learned about a lot of people's stories and I started mixing it in with what I was doing. I'm like, okay, this person did this to kind of get here. This person did this to kind of get there. What can I take from that and apply it to my life to go? Because there just isn't one singular route to get into pro racing, right? Like it's just, sure. you can go at it in so many different angles. So for me, what I learned that was going to work best for me was I was already starting, you know, 15, 20 years later than a lot of people start. So I was 26, 20, yeah, 26 or so when I was getting into, like, actually getting into racing. So, you know, a lot of people start when they're six or seven or eight years old. So, uh, yeah, so I had a long way to go, but I quickly started, um, uh, basically, you know, I was doing the research, putting that together, trying to look for funding, right? Cause money, it costs money to race. And then as I'm putting together the funding, I'm also teaching myself how to drive. Right. So I bought a racing simulator and put it in my house and started training myself on there every single day. And as I'm mixing all that together and continue to network and go to events, meet people, meet brands, meet companies, meet people in the industry, and just continue to connect, 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 do what I can to level up. Um, that's what allowed me to slowly start working my way up the different series. So I started racing late model stock cars in 2015 at Irwindale Speedway. From there, I moved up to the NASCAR K&N series, which was at that time was a, a regional series. Now it's called ARCA West. Um, and then from there, I moved up to the next ARCA level, which runs some of the bigger tracks. And then from there, NASCAR Truck Series. And then now I'm in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. 
So, you know, over the last eight years, basically just kind of progressing and running and learning, right? I'm, I'm learning every single day I race because I don't have the same level of experience as everybody else I race against. They have tons of more laps than I do. Uh, sometimes I have good days and sometimes I have terrible days, right? Mm -hmm. I've, I've, I finished uh, 11th at Daytona last year, right? I've also crashed out in the first few laps of the race, you know? So, you know, I've done it all. I've been all over the place, but I'm learning, um, continue to do what I can to be better and better and better. And eventually, you know, the ultimate goal is to race full time and do well in the NASCAR cup series. So that's the next level above where we're at. We're not there yet. I got to learn a lot, but um, it's something I'm still, you know, aiming for and, and looking to achieve. And, you know, it'd be an absolute dream to be lining up and racing at Daytona 500 one day. <laughs> well, I, I know you will be. I mean, you're already doing what you dreamed of in the past. You're already in that moment now and it's going to continue to grow. And I really appreciate that you mentioned you're still learning. And we all have to continue that. But I love how you're also sharing and teaching. I, I follow a lot of your social. Like even just this past week, you know, you, you were drag racing against an EV and you had some other behind the scene things. You're you're sharing with people how to take the curves. Take yeah, the curves. yeah, yeah. I, I love that. I, I think I think that really sets you apart from from most because you're you are I correct me if I'm wrong, but you're you're the only service member, certainly the first that I know of. Uh, but still in the service while racing and you must be uh, forgive the silly uh, pun but i mean you're you're burning fumes you're, you're burning all over the place time energy and you still make that effort to make your your uh your little social media updates and let people know what you're doing and i love that for for me from the outside of that world it's really fun and and i bet you're inspiring people that you don't even realize that for the first time are getting into that sport so I, I just I just love what you're doing with that. It's really inspiring. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, no, it's a it's been a grind for sure. And you know, even um, you know, right now in the, at the national level of NASCAR, right? So the top three series, the NASCAR Truck Series, Xfinity Series, and uh, Cup Series. Uh, yeah, I'm the only service member who's like serving and and also racing. But I don't think there's anybody racing period in the national level that um, ever served period anyway. So like I'm like the only one. It's um, incredible. Uh, yeah. In in the uh, <laughs> Our Arca series, though, I actually have a friend. His name is Ryan uh, Ryan Roulette. He's uh, he's he's currently serving in the Air Force. He's a pilot, and he races in that series. So um, it's pretty cool to kind of see what he's doing. And uh, eventually, hopefully, he can make it up to the national level, and then we'll both be you know service yeah. members racing <laughs> at the national yeah, level. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's um and then uh, I have some other friends too who are working on coming up through the ranks or racing other series outside of NASCAR. Um, Chris Walsh, uh, he was an Air Force guy. I had another friend who was Air Force. Like, the funny thing is, Air Force has mainly been Air Force guys. Maybe they just got more time than the Navy guys and the Army <laughs> guys. I don't know. But um, well, I, it's I, hard I, to leave a life of that type of speed. You got to find something, yeah. to, you know, something to get back exactly, to. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's really fantastic. Um, and I know you're still in the service, and and you are a leader, of course, uh, lieutenant commander, and all. I don't want to have you pick. You know, it might not be fair for me to ask you this. But I'm going to ask it anyways. <laughs> is is there a particular leader you've already had in your career, even when you were coming up, even going back to the Naval Academy? Is, is there one particular uh, leader or maybe even just a lesson in general that you picked up that like is constantly on loop there that's helping you today? You know, I've had a I've had, I've had a decent amount of pretty good leaders. Um, one of the best ones we ever had was um, he was our commandant, our the the last commandant I had at the Naval Academy, who's, you know, the commandant at the Naval Academy is, you know, right under the superintendent. Um, and he was a captain. And I, I am forgetting his last name now because it's been so many years. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember his face. I see him. I'll know him from a mile away. Um, but he was a really, really good leader. And the reason why I liked him a lot was you know, being a commandant of the Naval Academy, you're kind of you're 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 somewhat of the face right you you are you know because superintendent kind of has to be kind of really really separated versus commandant he's like in there right he's in there with the midshipmen he's 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 working through things he's helping morale be up you know he also is kind of like the judge and the juror right when people get in trouble and right. you know it, like time for people to get kicked out thing i mean he has to be that guy too so to be able to balance that where where to see him because i've had a couple commandants before him too as well and when he walks around, people don't fear him. They respect him, right? Mm -hmm. They respect him because the way he leads, right? He's always looking after people. He takes care of people. Um, he always wants to know how you're doing, tries to figure out different ways to help you, give you the tools to succeed. You know, at the same time, too, if you mess up, he's like, he's a very fair person, too. He's like, hey, 
like this is what you did wrong and this is what happens when you do this wrong right and 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 he goes through it with you and and that's it but at the same time too when you do good he's there for you too he wants to elevate you to the highest level possible um fun guy a super uh super energetic um he was probably one of the best that we ever had and i, I learned a lot from him because i'm like man like that's how I need to be. I need to be that guy. You don't need to be this guy who walks around and the moment you step into a room, oh my God, the commandant's here. Everybody's like, ah! you know, right. I want to be the one where people can relate to you and they feel like they can come to you, you know, but you don't, you, at the same time too, you don't want to be everyone's friend too, right? Like you got to find that balance because I think that's the tough part about being a leader is, you know, for the people who are uh, more kind, um, have more compassion, sometimes uh, the people you're leading will take that as oh, oh like being friendly and all of a sudden they want to be your friend it's like no you can't be your friend like i still got to lead you but at the same time too i want to be able to still respect you um show compassion and be able to help you elevate to the highest level possible but also at the same time too if you mess up like i gotta you know we gotta go through those motions too <laughs> right yeah so, uh, he was great he was really really good and definitely showed how to have that balance and i think as a leader you have to have the balance you cannot be you cannot be an extremist. <laughs> oh, oh, for sure. I used to say in the army, it's it's one thing to make people shake in their boots, but it's a lot more impressive to see them march forward in their boots. Exactly. That's Either you're in front, a side, or behind them. You know. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That, that's great. So, so um, I know you're. You know, I probably know more than than the listeners because I'm kind of you know. <laughs> following everything you're doing yeah but but just catch us all up to speed like what's the day-to-day -day now how's how's your how's your schedule what other projects are you working on and more importantly um please tell our listeners what we can do to show you more support and to follow what you're working on yeah for sure so um right now i have a ton going on <laughs> so uh <laughs> last year we started our race team right so um up until 2022, I had been racing for all these other teams throughout my whole career. And eventually, I knew there was going to come some point where I wanted to start my own thing, right? I wanted to have my own team, build my own thing. Because I knew the only way truly to be really in charge of my own journey is I had to have my own stuff, right? If I continue to race for people, I give people the opportunity to say no to me. And I don't want anybody to say no. Like, if I, I'm, I'm the only person who can tell myself no. So um, uh, we decided to start our own team, which is a big venture. It costs a lot of money, and it's not... It's not easy at all. It would have been so much simpler for me to keep racing for other teams. But we wanted to start this because we wanted to not only um, provide an opportunity for me to go racing and, and doing all the stuff we're doing, but also for me to provide opportunity to other people to come race with us too as well. Hmm. We had that platform. We're building something great. Um, we're not out here to you know rip people off or anything like that. We're out here to provide real value, not only for the brands that work with us, but also the drivers that um, come drive with us too as well. Um, like even this coming up weekend um, here at the Chicago street course race. I mean, I'm not driving that one. We have another driver who's jumped in to come drive with us. So um, hmm. it's pretty cool when we, uh, when we get those opportunities to do that. And, um, you know, University of Chicago is sponsoring that car, the school that he went to. So that's pretty cool. Um, outside of our race team stuff, which that keeps me busy every day. I got multiple meetings and calls I got to deal with every morning I wake up with, I have a minimum, uh, a minimum of like 25 texts in my phone like from from the first couple hours of the morning you know because i'm on the west coast so they're all up three oh, hours sure. before i am yeah yeah, yeah. so <laughs> like I, I when i wake up you know it's like already you know basically you know nine something 10 a.m over there on the east coast and they're like you know they've already been grinding <laughs> so anyways i gotta deal with that throughout the day i had different meetings and stuff for all the other businesses i have um i don't i'm not only just doing stuff in racing um, I, I have a real estate investment business where I've invested in a bunch of real estate properties around the country from West Coast all the way to East Coast, literally, literally. <laughs> um, and then uh, I also have a trucking company. It's mainly West Coast based. We do Amazon goods. So I got semi trucks pretty much every day of the week running around on the West Coast uh, delivering Amazon 53 foot trailers. Wow. Uh yeah. And then um, I do, I've been recently doing some government contracting as well. So I'm trying to grow that side of the business. Um, I have an esports company called E-Racing Association, and it's a league. We put on um, sim racing events uh, through iRacing and also on Mario Kart as well. And we're looking to add one more platform. Hopefully we can announce it soon. But um, we've been doing that and we give away prize money. So on the iRacing events for our E-Racing Association, um, the, if you win the event, it's $4,000 cash that you get. Uh, we have like four of those events a year. You could literally win $16,000 in a year. It's pretty cool <laughs> from home. 
on your simulator. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then uh, outside of that, you know, I got all this stuff I do. I manage different social media stuff. I do a lot of social media, obviously, myself. Um, and I'm, I'm all over the place. I, I, I got uh, a media a media productions business now, too, as well. Um, we, we do media stuff for people as far as like if people need a videographer, photographer, graphic design, social media management, you name it. We do it all. Um, but yeah, no, it's, uh, it's a lot going on. <laughs> <laughs> have, have you, maybe the Navy didn't issue this to you, but have you heard of this thing called sleep? <laughs> now, you know, the funny thing is with all that stuff going on, I still force myself to make sure I get sleep. So, um, I'm not getting eight hours a day. You know, that, that would be amazing, but, um, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm probably at six to seven a yeah. day on, on usual. Sevens are my good day. Like if I can get like seven, I'm like, Perfect. That's a golden. Usually, that's the golden. Yeah, that's the perfect number there. That hard. That hardly. Lucky it's number. Usually, yeah. It's usually six to seven. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. Um, oh, that that's just wild. I'm going to make sure offline. Um, we'll get some links so I can properly put all all the all the, the ways folks can follow you, um, and all your projects. Now, I I do always like to have a fun little, t- kind of a time travel question. And by no means are you even close to done. You're kind of just stretching your legs on this incredible journey, and it's gonna it's gonna go to places I'm sure you're not even thinking of yet. Yeah. <laughs> but just for fun, just for hypothetical amusement, if you could go back to yourself as a teenager before you even went out to Division One applications, before that even happened, knowing what you've already accomplished and what you're working on now, and how fulfilling you know having a dream manifest like that is. What would be like if you had just a, a few moments with your younger self? What would be the advice or the encouragement you would give him? This is what I would have done. I would have went back and been like, Jesse, I need you to do this. It's going to be a little multi year process on this. But in 2008, you are going to get a career starter loan from the United States Naval Academy. Actually, it's from USAA, but the United States Naval Academy pretty much brokers that deal and makes it happen. It's going to be a loan that's going to be like $30,000 and it's going to, or 35 or whatever it was, 30 to 35 or something like that. You're going to get that money and it's going to be at like, I think it's like 2% interest or something crazy like that. They're going to give you this basically free money. When you get that, I need you to hold it. And I need you to not do any, put it in like some, you know, put it in anything that makes more than 2% interest. They can make money, hold it in there until 2012 or 13 or so. Once that year hits, I need you to go put all that money in Bitcoin. And then after that, I need you to pull all of it out. And I need to put in 2021, I need you to pull it all out. You will be a multi-billionaire. And I would, and, and I would be like, okay, I'll do that. And yeah, I would be a billionaire right now. Like literally right now to speak, I'd be like, man, this is crazy. Yeah, that's what I would have told myself. I would have changed nothing else. I would have just done that. Life would have been dead. Even if I would pull that money out in 2000. 17 when bitcoin first had its major jump i still i think it's still would have been a billionaire <laughs> yeah. well m- money's great so I, I can speak to you about that fun side <laughs> of the world but i'll tell you this um you know this this has been my experience if you're happy with a dollar in your pocket you'll be just as happy with a billion but if yeah. you're miserable with a dollar in your pocket you're going to be just as miserable with a billion <laughs> Oh yeah, no, exactly, exactly. <laughs> what, what you're doing now is so uh it's got to be rewarding on a level that you know, even the Elon Musk of the world would probably, uh, you know, like, like to have a moment in your sunshine once in a while, the way you're handling <laughs> yourself and, and all the folks that you're inspiring. I mean, that's that to me, I don't know if you take the time, maybe it's not always healthy for people to do this, but I've read a lot of comments on your, on your socials. And there are people that didn't know anything about racing. And now they're like number one fans and they want to <laughs> do it. And you've been, you know, like they're looking at your life. They're like, Holy cow! I, you know, I, I want to do this too. Yeah, and, and that's got to be that's got to be something that just kind of picks you up when you see those comments. Yeah, yeah, no, sometimes it does. Um, you know, obviously, I, you know, I see, I've seen a lot over the years, and um, no, it does. And I, I do my best to continue to help people because I know when I was first getting into racing, I needed help, right? I had to reach out to a lot of people to try to just gain information for them, and uh, for the people who actually responded and gave me information, I was like, man, this is awesome! Like, thank you for doing that. So I, I told myself. Hey, when other people reach out for help, like they're, if somebody's trying to progress their life and go somewhere and they reach out to me for help and they're like willing to put in the effort, like, cause there are some people who just ask questions just to ask and they're not really trying to do anything and, and you get enough of those where you're like, okay, look, if you're willing to take a step, I'll right. help you. 
But if you're just asking me just because you just want to put it in your head and that's it, then yeah, you're, it's not going to work. You know, there's no right. point in me giving you information. So um, I do my best to help everyone I can. Um, and I, I, you know, obviously over the years, you get enough of these questions, you start seeing trends on what's the main questions you get asked. But then what I do so that I don't have to spend a ton of time rewriting up the thing, I create these things called playbooks. So like, you know, uh, you know, like my trucking business, I knew that once I started it, I was going to have a bunch of people who want to get into it too as well. So I wrote a playbook from start to finish on how I started my trucking business. And I saved it on my notes. And when people ask, I send them this long document that said, this is how I did it every step. And then, you know, my, uh, even racing, I have a playbook for that. Like people ask me, Hey, how do you get into racing? I'm like, here's my playbook. Here you go. And I update it, you know, every so often because I learn new things, tricks of the trade along the way. I'm like, okay, this is probably good information or new contacts I can throw in where people can reach out to help themselves with this and that I update it. And I just keep sending this out. I've sent it out so many times now. And, um, not everybody goes and does everything on it, or some people might start going and they quit. But uh, I, it's cool to see that there's a decent group of people who have actually followed my playbooks on different things from other businesses to this, to that, and it actually worked for them. They come back like a year or two later, like, hey, I did what you told me to do and I accomplished my dream. I was like, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> that is so awesome. And you don't know who they're going to lead in the future too. Well, exactly. So I always tell people like, don't let it stop here. Like mm -hmm. I did this for you. So when someone comes back to you, you better freaking do it for them. You know, don't let, don't let me be the nice guy only. You need to be the nice guy too. Yeah. That's awesome. Your, your leadership will never have a last lap. That's the fun part of how that works. So another, another racing pun. Ah, I'm on fire today. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, this has been a real treat. I, I appreciate your time. I'm definitely going to have, like I said, we'll have all the links and uh, we'll be rooting you on. Um, you got any any big calendar dates um, you want to mention that you, you could use a, a, a louder, louder and clearer uh, veteran uh, cheer crowd for? Yeah, anytime we're racing. You know, this year we're not racing every single race. We're running more of a part-time schedule, but anytime we're racing. This weekend uh chicago street course race we're racing um we're working on daytona right now hopefully we can secure the deal that we need so we can go make that happen uh we've got uh charlotte roval uh, coming up uh, in october we're gonna do and hopefully we can do more i mean at the end of the day the biggest thing that helps us if if you know anyone listening to this they might not have the means to help us like as far as like sponsorship and this and that but they might know somebody who can right mm -hmm. and half the time is it doesn't you know you don't you might not have to have it but if you know someone or you know someone who knows someone and you, you all got good strong you know personal connections where you can talk to the people that kind of stuff helps you know well for sure what for doesn't sure. help is when someone's like oh you know you should just hit up like walmart or something like that well I mean, that's easy to say. Yeah, I should just hit up Elon Musk, too. I don't know the guy. Like, <laughs> does anybody know him? Like, if you know him, connect me. But, like, you know, it's going to have that happen sometimes. People reach out. They're like, hey, you know, you should just boom, boom, boom. And I'm like, I know that's a great idea. And trust me, we've all thought of that. But if you don't know them, and I don't know them, there's no their their email addresses isn't sitting online. Their phone number isn't just sitting online. And, and they don't like, hold and they don't check their phone or emails anyway. Is exactly, exactly. I mean, like <laughs> even people are like, oh, just shoot them a DM on you know Instagram. I'm like, you know how many other people are shooting a DM? Like, you gotta personally know them, and that's how the connection works. <laughs> yeah. yeah, your your network is your net your net worth, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. So well, this is this has been absolutely fantastic. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, folks, again, you you want to you want to follow. You will never catch up, but you do want to follow and you want to cheer on this fellow veteran and service member, still in the Navy Reserves, Lieutenant Commander yep. Jesse Wuji. And I want to I want to thank you so much from the Lima Charlie Show, and from all the veterans that listen. We broadcast locally, of course, but we also stream, so you do have fans and listeners, and um, all over the place. And and I hope you know that we're all very proud of you, and um, you're serving our nation. And you're inspiring others. So thank you again for your time and, and thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me.